So you have a well-loved cat. I have a couple of them. They've been with us for a long time. And then you find another one, a real sweetheart, who needs a good home. Hey, you can handle this, right? Not so fast. These additions can be a life changer for everybody. Oh, C Cindy, you're here. Excellent. Great to see you. Thank you for coming. I, it, I always start out by saying, in case we haven't met, well, of course, I meet Cindy every week. But anybody else who I've never met, I'm veterinarian Dr. Jeff Nickel, and this is Gaston, and this is Tony, and this border collie right here, come over here, girlfriend, is Miss America. And this evening we're going to talk about cats, but Miss America, well, you know, she has to participate. Um, she always gets the participation trophy. So I'm, I'm residency trained in veterinary behavior medicine, what we call a veterinary behaviorist, and it's all I do anymore, but for many years I practiced general medicine, and that included cats and dogs, hit by cars, fractures, diabetes, liver disease, thyroid disease, heart disease, fell in the blank. So if you have questions about anything pet related, you're welcome to interrupt me anytime. We're again talking about cats tonight. It doesn't have to be about cats. It doesn't have to be about cats who don't get along at home. And that's really the essence of what we're, what we're talking about here. I'd like to start off by just reading a question. I get some of my best ideas for these Facebook Live events from questions that people send me on Facebook. I often answer them on Facebook but also put them in my weekly column in the Albuquerque Journal. But let me start out with this one. The question was this. I have two cats, and since I brought the new guy home, it is a divided household. That's never fun. My two established cats are terrified of this guy, or they just don't like him. They hide and don't come out. They hiss and growl. I have to lock up the new cats so the other cats can come out and eat. Now they are even too scared to eat, like they're on edge and very stressed. And we see this. They can actually get physically ill as well, not just agitated and anxious and depressed and unwilling to eat, but they can develop physical bladder problems, upper respiratory disease, um, smoldering feline AIDS or feline leukemia infections that might have remained latent long term suddenly become major disorders. Um, so this kind of stress is important. One of the cats has even started using the bathroom out of the litter box. And the toileting behaviors are common in stressed cats. So let's get after this thing. So here was the answer I gave, but we're going to share a lot more information here in just a minute. Established indoor kitties commonly freak out when a new kid shows up, especially when the party crasher is significantly younger. And thank you for the hearts, by the way. I appreciate those when people recognize what I'm sharing is helpful. Because if I talk about stuff that doesn't matter to anybody, I need to pick a different subject. So anyway, um, uh, the older, if your older cats had been part of a feline group in flux since kittenhood, they would have had the social skills to adapt to the intrusion of this adolescent interloper. But their, when their cute little fuzzy brains developed past the age of seven weeks, the socialization train left the station. Let me, let me explain a little bit. People who have cats in a colony, a social group of cats, it actually can be similar to what goes on in the wild, except that in a home, they're also socialized with humans. The people who um, share their homes with foster kittens and adult cats, um, they're not only doing some really valuable stuff, but they um, are getting, keeping their cats, sorry, guess one. oh, there we go, that was one of our little cat toys there. They're keeping their cats accustomed to interacting with lots of other cats. And if they're raised with a group in flux from the time they're babies, and they live, live out their whole lives like that, then you can bring other cats into the group, and it's just kind of a non-problem. What goes wrong, like so many of us, we have indoor cats. Um, we may have gotten them as youngsters, and they have remained in a static group all that time. They have not gotten accustomed to coming and going of other cats. 
And so then when you have these established cats and you bring somebody new into the group, especially you have these um, mature, not that I would necessarily call these two guys mature, but you know, <laughs> they've been adults for a long time. Um, and then you bring in a new wild and crazy guy or girl, it can really cause a lot of trouble. And that's exactly what's going on with this question. So I explained that these folks were doing the right thing by isolating the new cat. The collective angst could be reduced with medication while you provide hideouts, tall climbing and perching structures, and opportunities for indoor stalking and predatory thrills, but that's only the beginning. Now people are like, medication, really? Well, in this particular home, we have a very big problem. We have cats who are so panicked and frightened that they're not even eating. They have to be set up for success. Uh, if we wait too long, uh, cats who stop eating altogether uh, actually can experience a breakdown in their liver and they can die in the space of 48 hours. So cats who stop eating, they get our attention immediately. Um, this was a major problem. So I went on to point out that feline urine soiling is often stress related. Over time, these cats can develop permanent changes in the walls of their bladders, reduced immune function, and other unhealthy behaviors. Your conflicted home needs a custom fitted solution. I suggest visiting my website, Dr. Jeff Nichol, drjeffnichol.com, and click on the consultations tab. Because one on one consultations allow us to custom fit our behavior modifications and our management changes to the individual cats and the individual home, the comings and goings of the people, so that we get as good a result as we can. I'm going to share some broad concepts here, but you know, custom fitting this stuff really matters. So, you know, how do we start out right? Well, for beginners, there is this what's called sensitive period in the developing feline brain between ages two and seven weeks. And as they're going through these developmental anatomic changes as the brain matures, it's a process that's going on, that window of time, two to seven weeks, is when kittens can learn that other cats are fine, that other people of various descriptions, big people, little people, men, women, children, people of different races. You want young cats to be exposed to every kind of person they might ever encounter, and other cats, and dogs. When, when we got these two cats as kittens, they came from households that had dogs, because we have a dog. And so when they moved in here, it was not this major shock. And because our dog came from a household, actually not with dogs, but we socialized her with cats when she was very young, at about seven weeks, everybody did okay. But you know, we all start out as kids, don't we? What was the childhood like? Well, if you have a cat who never got socialized to other cats as a youngster, bringing a new cat in, frankly, might never work. And beyond that socialization window when they're youngsters, genetic influences, you know, and we know that very robust genetic studies to show that some cats, they're just not wired to be social with other cats, and not do well even with the best socialization. So we've got to be careful with those. And then, of course, we have other cats who um, might have been raised as orphans. And we know from lots of studies, and I had personal experience with this, having raised a litter of kittens, couldn't find the mother, and these little guys were about a day or two old. Took them in, bottle fed them, did all the things we know from research and experience make a big difference. And they grew up physically healthy, but they had uninhibited bites. They were way too high energy to make good pets. And, well, there's something called, and this doesn't sound nice, but it's an important component in having pets, or any creature in your life, they need a healthy fear of humans. When I go backpacking in the wilderness, there are bears out there, and most of them have a healthy fear of humans. They don't want anything to do with us. Now, they're not domestic pets either, are they? But our cats and our dogs need to recognize that we are their leaders, and you don't pull on Superman's cape, okay? You have a healthy relationship. We know who's boss. Well, the trouble with these orphan kittens, for example, is that they were never raised by a mother who showed them how to respect the boss, how to respect the human leader. Socialization is something that's not only a direct experience with people, but it comes from the mother. 
So you've got situations where you might not have the right components for adding another cat. So you want to be aware of this kind of stuff and think it through. So let me read you a little bit of just a part of an abstract of a recent research paper. And it was titled, Behavioral Associations with Breed, Coat Type, and Eye Color in Single Breed Cats. Now, research always has to be fairly narrow in its scope. And you know, you really can't draw broad conclusions from one study. But this brings some valuable components of this whole thing into the discussion. In this study, behavioral characteristics in purebred cats you know, they had to narrow the gene pool so they could work on exactly what they were trying to learn. So they used purebred cats. Were hypothesized to associate with breed, eye color, coat color, and coat pattern. They had 574 what they call single bred or purebred registered cats in this study. And that's a pretty big number. Um, breeds included, you're ready for this list? And Tony and Gaston here, they're they're mixed bred cats, like most, like most of our pets in this country. But in this study, they had Abyssinians, Bengals, Burmans, Burmese, Devon Rexes, Maine Coons, Norwegian forest cats, which are pretty cool, Orientals, that includes, you know, like Himalayans, uh, Persians, Ragdolls, Siamese, and Tonkinese. Okay? And what they found that nearly all associations between behavior and coat type could be attributed to breed-based behavior differences. In other words, they find a genetic link between the, the coat type and the color of these cats and behaviors. You know, you may have heard people say black cats are very often can be kind of aggressive, and orange tabbies are usually sweethearts. This was not covered in this research because those are mixed breeds, but actually that has been established. Not in every case, but very often that is so. So in this particular study, it showed that associations independent of breed included increased cat aggression, in other words, with other cats in the same home, in agouti cats, these are cats that have, you know, kind of a hair color like mine, you know, gray and dark, gray and dark, that kind of thing. Only it's not because they're getting older, but that's just what they look like. Uh, and prey interest in red cats, more predatory, decreased stranger-directed aggression in piebald cats, <coughs> big patches of different colors, and increased likelihood of separation anxiety in Siamese and Tonkinese cats. Really? Yeah, because these genes can be very closely linked on the chromosome. There's a lot of factors that goes into whether adding another cat is going to go well in your house. You need to think this stuff through. But most important is what that cat experienced as a baby. You don't know, I usually suggest not doing it because everybody can get highly stretched. So okay, so what if you, you've got a problem, you've already taken this cat in, and you have World War III. What are you gonna do now? All right, let me share some advice with you. It's, again, research-based. Everything I talk about is, I don't invent stuff. I'm an ethical practitioner, and by virtue of that, we share information that is uh, well-supported by science. So um, what you try to do if you've already got this problem underway is you want to reduce the sensitivity that one cat has to the other so that instead of immediately becoming frightened or hostile when seeing the other cat, actually have learned to associate a positive emotional state, to anticipate good things uh, that might happen. So what we do with those things is we can do what's called counter condition. If they have a conditioned response to seeing the other cat and seeing red, we wanted to change that conditioning, counter condition to something different. Like, I get fed tasty food, I get petted or groomed, or some other pleasurable thing for that cat. Okay? So, um, every cat, I don't care whether they get along well with their roommates or not, if they're indoors or outdoors for that matter, all cats need to be able to climb up high and perch and see the world from a high perspective. So floor to ceiling cat trees are exceptionally important. Always locate them against a window and on the outside go to Wild Birds Unlimited or some other place that sells bird feeders and bird houses that have come equipped with suction cups. So you can stick them to the exterior side of the window and then they'll sell you this film so that 
cats can see the cats sitting on the cat tree on one side of the window inside the house can see into the cat, uh, the bird feeder or the uh, birdhouse, but the birds cannot see the cat. Okay, uh, and that's a very legitimate predatory experience for cats. And these two little guys have wandered off, but they'll be back if I get more. Yeah, you know, they've eaten all the snacks that I had for them. Helen, do you okay. have any more? I do. Thank you. That'd be great. Oh, here comes Gaston. He, do you want me to hand you these back? Uh, no. Oh, okay. Um, so, uh, hide boxes. Cats need solitude, and they need to get the heck away from each other. And um, here, can I give you these as well? Um, they need to get away from each other, maybe by all, all by themselves. So multiple hide boxes, different heights in different rooms, are essentially important. And if you use a box on a shelf, for example, turn it so the opening to the box is not out into the room, so the cat enters it from the side or even has to go around behind it, so that they uh, really don't believe anybody can see them. And they need to have this choice, whenever they want, to get up high or get out of the way. Um, and you create vertical real estate, as we say, and you can have cats who really don't like each other very much. They still don't, but they can stay out of each other's way. Okay, and that can be really important. Toys are important too. Hunt and pounce toys like this, where you've got the little fish or whatever. These cats are interested in the food, so they're not going to play with this. But playing with hunt and pounce toys around dusk, that's when the natural day-night cycle with cats has them in a predatory emotional state and they are predators. That's what they're supposed to be spending most of their time doing, is hunting uh, for small creatures to kill and consume. And if you don't have those kinds of opportunities, something that mimics that, then very often another cat in the household is the closest thing to a high status cat for prey. If it has a pulse and it moves, then the high status cat may bully it, and you have cat fights. And you should be able to eliminate that problem by giving lots of opportunities to get up high, I suggest a floor to ceiling, not a three or four foot tall, but a floor to ceiling cat tree against a window in every room of your house, and hide boxes, multiple hide boxes, different heights, different rooms. So these cats can get away from each other and opportunities to be a real life predator in the evening. Nobody's buying when I'm selling right here. Okay, well, you know how cats are. All right. Um, and you also, if, if they're not getting along, they need to start off by being completely separated, like the folks who sent me that question. Um, at least a few weeks, if not a few months, never see each other. You can keep one cat in one room and the other have the run of the house, and then trade them each day. So they have those opportunities and that variety. Um, and after at least a few weeks, if not a few months, you can start counter conditioning them on either side of a closed door. You need two people communicate through the door, and you want to food motivate them before doing this. So in other words, withhold a meal for a little while so they're pretty, pretty hungry and have really tasty food. And you start out by feeding them a good distance from either side of the door. Now, how far is that? Well, if they are got their ears back and their eyes are dilated and they're tense or crouched, then you know that you're not going to teach these cats anything valuable. You need to back up and create distance until everybody says, all right, I know that other bozo's on the other side, but I'm going to go ahead and eat anyway because he's not close enough to be a threat. And you repeat at those distances until you say, you know what, I think these cats are pretty comfortable at this distance, so let's bring them a little closer to each other on either, either side of the door and feed them at that distance. You want to do this at least a couple times a day, and you can see this could take a long time till you finally work each cat close enough that they're on either side of a closed door and comfortable. You've accomplished that, but your cats still aren't together, they don't even see each other. So the next thing you can do is set the stage for a partial barrier, where you use, for example, a baby gate. Some people have used a screen door they have installed. And my goodness gracious, Tony, you're making a big mess. Oh my heavens. We've got cat food all over the place and it's on the floor now. Um, you're happy to clean that up, aren't you, Mr. Mary? Well, we'll let the cats do it. Um, so then you, if you've got like a baby gate, for example, and you throw a sheet over it, both sides, so that the cats still can't see each other, but they can hear each other a little better, pick up each other's scent a little bit, and you back up way on either side, and you feed or groom 
uh, until everybody's comfortable and a little closer and a little closer until you finally I need the side of this thing. And then you say, all right, how can we raise the challenge a little more and get them a little more accustomed to being near each other? Well, bring them further away and you raise the, uh, the sheet just a little bit so they can see a little bit of each other's body. Now, when you're not teaching this counter conditioning exercise, that door is closed and nobody's allowed on either side. Sometimes people say, well, they, they like to play with each other's feet. Well, the problem with that is that that's predatory play because those little paws on the other side are moving erratically like prey. And each cat can start to associate predatory aggression with the scent of that other cat. You don't want that. Well, this is a lot of work. It takes a lot of time because as you move them closer to each other on either side of this baby gate, for example, with the sheet raised just a tiny bit, and finally if everybody's comfortable with seeing that much of the other guy, you bring them way far on the other side and raise the sheet a little more, and then gradually bring them a little closer. Very time consuming. And there's no guarantee that this is going to work, okay? But this is the structure because you gradually want these cats to say that whenever I'm this other cat, good things keep happening. So when we gradually integrate them, we do it extremely slowly. Because if they have one spat, one knockdown drag out, we can undo an enormous amount of progress. We don't want to do that. Okay? Now there's other things you can do too. For example, and I don't have a cat here for demonstration purposes, so there's Tony, he's picking up a footy knock on the floor. So you get a hand towel like this. And I don't have here, I'll use Miss America as a cat. So you take the hand towel and you rub it on the side of one cat's face. They have special oil glands, and they have special scent that is a very social pheromone. It's not so much a scent, it's a pheromone. It doesn't really have a scent. And you take that, and you get that on that towel from the side of one cat's face, and you go to the other room and rub that on the side of the other cat's chest. Just pretending that Miss America's a cat here, because my, my cats are eating right now. They don't want to be disturbed. Okay? And then you take that towel to the other cat in the other part of the house, and you rub it the pheromones, the social pheromones from the side of that cat's face and bring that towel to the side of the other cat's chest. And you do this every day. And you never wander the towel. And when you rotate them from one room to the rest of the house each day, you leave the litter pans where they are. Now you need clean litter pans, but you want to leave a tiny bit of stool from the other cat in the other litter pan. So you can trade the litter pan so you can move that around. You want these cats to learn that the scent of this other cat is nearby, and only good things happen when that when they pick up that scent. And I just got a question. Okay, Martha, I had you for 21 minutes and then it froze up on me. I'm sorry about that, Martha. I uh, if you have a question, you buy, you're very welcome to type it into the comment line. And if I don't get a chance to answer it during the live portion of this, I'll answer it later. I did reset our Wi-Fi prior to this Facebook live, and it was not supposed to happen. Um, but it can. Sorry. Might be on their end too. I'm sorry, Carol. I said it might be on their end too. Yeah, and it could be. It could be your end too, Martha. Um, these things, you know, with all the no technology way. we have nowadays, it isn't necessarily that uh, reliable, is it? <laughs> anyway, um, it's really valuable to have a structure for your cast, not only during the counter conditioning that you're going to try to do when you bring cats together, but a structure is valuable anyway. They know that when feeding time is, they know when playtime is, they know when it's dusk and you've got the hunt and pounce toys, that kind of stuff. Um, you want these cats to have reliability. Now something that can make a difference is a, feel, is a pheromone product called feel Let me turn the, uh, turn the camera around so you can see. No, you won't be there. There it is right there. It's called feel -Away. Now there's a product called feel -Away Classic and that is a calming pheromone. This is feel away multi-cat, which is a social pheromone. And this comes as a plug-in diffuser. I'll show it to you. What do you think, girlfriend? It's pretty interesting, isn't it? Um, well, this is a brand new one, and I don't want to completely take the box apart. Here we go. There. So it looks a lot like a uh, room freshener, like this plug it into a wall outlet, and then the pheromone screws into the bottom of it, lasts about 30 days, and it's very helpful. 
Now, of course, people say, well, I tried Fever Away Multicat. I read about it. It came well recommended. But we were disappointed it didn't help. Well, all of us are looking for simple, quick solutions to our problems. I always do that. You think by now I would have learned that most things don't have simple solutions. This problem is one of those. It does not have a simple solution. And so consequently, you, um, you use the Feel Away Multicat Pheromone Diffuser as an aid. It helps, but it is not the solution to the whole thing. But I certainly recommend it. And if you have cats on either side of a door, the outlet that's closest to that door, that's where you want to plug in one of these multi-cat diffusers so that when they're near each other and you do these counter-conditioning exercises, they go, you know, I'm feeling pretty relaxed and social and I know that other cat is nearby. You're developing a new conditioned response and you're putting it in place of the old unhealthy conditioned response like, I hear you, I smell you, I see you, I hate your guts, I'll have to kill you. Instead, the new conditioned response is, well, things are rather pleasant when you're nearby and I keep getting good things from my person. And so maybe being near you is okay. So that's the concept behind uh, counter conditioning. Now, when I have a, a colleague, Dr. Jermaine Rivard, a veterinary behaviorist, who is a longtime researcher as well as a practitioner. And one thing Dr. Rivard has learned is that you can add on to the value of a pheromone by tricking what's called the vomeronasal organ. That's this little receptor that sits behind the nasal passages uh, and it picks up pheromones. Um, these, again, don't have a scent, but they are in neurochemicals, actually. And they trigger the vomeral nasal organ in the back of the cat's nasal passages to send impulses to the brain that are calming them. That's pretty good. And these things are, are synthetic analogs of something that occurs quite naturally in cats, again, like the pheromones produced by the glands in the side of the cat's cheeks. So if you take um, something like an enzymatic shampoo, before you even let these cats anywhere near each other, if you decide you're going to take another cat in and you bathe each of them with an enzymatic shampoo, you do the best you can to remove their scent, at least for a little while. And then on their coat, you can put the feel away spray I don't have a spray with me right now, but it also comes with a little pump spray, and you can put it on a cloth, and then you would rub it on the cat's side, and that will take the place of the cat's very own scent, at least temporarily, so that when the cats get near each other, it's not like I smell an alien creature, it's like, hmm, I'm feeling pretty good being near you. Not the only solution, but a helpful one. So I'm a believer in doing everything we can. Now, one last thing I'll mention to you. This is a natural product, and it's called Zilkeen with a Z. And Zilkeen is um, a hydrolyzed milk protein called alpha-cazazepine. And you don't need a prescription for Zilkeen. They make three strengths. This is the 75 milligram, as you can see. And it is um, so tasty. It comes in a capsule. But, I mean, you can give the capsule to the cat or you can open the capsule and dump the powder onto their food and they all like it. Not a problem. And you give this once a day. And it's not a medication. It has no side effects. Um, good, good research supporting it. It's not highly potent anti-anxiety because you don't get that with supplements. But it can be helpful. And it's one of those things, again, you don't need to see your veterinarian for it, nor do you need to for the, uh, the feel away. And again, please don't say, oh great, I got that stuff and I'm giving it to my cats and that should do it, right? No, you gotta do everything else too. And again, you need the right cats for the problem. Um, they're genetically not programmed to be social with other cats. If they didn't get proper socialization between that fixed window, two to seven weeks as kittens, um, if they were orphan raised, and some of these color patterns, that can stack the deck against you. Cats are going to be incompatible, and despite all of this, including with real severe situations where we use medications, we don't always win. Uh, these are tough problems. I didn't, make to be, I didn't mean to be such a pessimist. Anybody got any other questions? I think Martha.
you send that question back to me? Let me see. Um, and I didn't get another question. But you're, anybody with a question is welcome to send it to me on, uh, on my Facebook page. Um, and I invite anybody to go to my website, which is drjeffnickel.com, drjeff, N-I-C-H-O-L.com. Um, and, and it's searchable. And you can find an enormous amount of information I've loaded in there for many years on uh, cat and dog behavior and physical issues too because it has my column in there in the Albuquerque Journal. I've been doing it without, without interruption since 1996. And so you can find all kinds of stuff in there just by searching it. Um, but also, if you go down to the bottom of the homepage, you can subscribe. And it's no charge. And when you do, by the way, I will send you for free my at-home pet first aid and CPR guide, which are worth printing out and keeping handy just in case. And every Tuesday morning, you will get in your email box my weekly media blog, which again serves as my uh, column in the Albuquerque Journal, and my video from the week before my Facebook Live. So you don't have to tune in live, and you get that stuff, and you can watch it. And I hope that's helpful. Um, I want to uh, I want to thank you for sharing some time with me and my pets and uh, for being so committed to your own cats and dogs to learn the things you need to know to give them the best life possible. It's those of us who are empathic and understand kindness to those who are closest to us, our pets and our human family members, we're actually nicer to people outside our home and we treat ourselves better and we set a good example. And life in our country right now is kind of divided. I'm not happy about it. But we, if we're nice and we have that caring uh, kind of a affect about us because we practice it at home with our pets, we can bring out the best in other people too. Even if they don't notice it consciously, they, they come away just a little better. And that's a service that we can provide, and our pets sort of provide that service for us, don't they? Because they treat us well. They always forgive, and they never leave, do they? We screw it up with them and give us a second chance anyway we can carry that forward. So again, thanks for being here and, uh, and everybody wear your mask and stay safe and I'll see you next Thursday night.